baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Oh, let's continue to give the Lord praise tonight. Let's lift him up all over this building. Right where you're at, lift up the name of Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We praise your great name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. How many have enjoyed yourself this week in the Holy Ghost? Oh, come on, you can do better than that. How many of you have enjoyed yourself in the Holy Ghost? How many have received good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over? Amen. Amen. What a privilege it is to, to spend this time with you. I've met many of you, and, and I've worshipped with you. I have prayed with you. And I'm going to tell you what, in, in the state of Louisiana, the devil has a rough future ahead of him. Amen. If what we've experienced this week is any indication, praise God. And I want to give honor to um, Brother Patrick and to Brother Johnson and to the Spell family, Bishop Spell, Brother Tony Spell, and um, all of the ministering brethren that are here, the pastors that have come. It has been such an honor to spend time with you. I've enjoyed uh, being with uh, Brother Cox and Brother Morton. It's been a pleasure and just everybody that's here, I, I'm, it's my privilege to be able to, to fellowship and to worship with you. And I'm excited about what God has for the remainder of this service. Amen. It's Friday night. It's time to praise God. Yeah, I hope you brought your praise clothes. I hope you brought your praise shoes. Amen. Because God is great. Amen. And we want to talk about it tonight. All right. If you've got your Bible... Go ahead and turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 1. Matthew, chapter 1. And and while you're turning there, if you don't hear anything else from me this week, hear this. Fall in love with the Word of God. Fall in love with the Word of God. Just immerse yourself in the Word of God. Listen to me, young man. Dive into the Word of God and find out... His true intent. Feel what he's saying, young lady. Pray it. Get it down in your spirit. Because if you'll immerse yourself in the Word of God, it will become a fire shut up in your bones. We quote that scripture as though the Holy Ghost is a fire shut up in our bones. But that's not what the Bible says. It says, His Word was in my heart like a fire shut up in my bones. Amen. And it's so precious and wonderful. And there's power in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 1. I don't know if you have ever read through the entire genealogy of Matthew, but we're about to give it a go. I don't know if you've ever heard anybody preach out of that. I don't know if I've done it too much, but amen. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. The son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac. And Isaac begat Jacob. And Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. And Judas begat Phares and Zerah of Thamar. And Phares begat Ezram. Ezram begat Aram. This is deep stuff. And Aram begat Amenadab, Amenadab begat Naasson, Naasson begat Salmon, Salmon begat Boaz of Rechab, Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, Obed begat Jesse, Jesse begat David the king. Now, I'm not going to torment you by reading through the entire thing, but I want to point out to you that there's a lot of begats. They were having sons. They were propagating a lineage that would bring a Savior into the world. Come down with me 
to the to verse 15. And Eliad begat Eleazar, and Eleazar begat Nathan, and Nathan begat Jacob. Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Amen. I think it's important that we be in the right family. I think it's important that we make sure that we come from the right stock. The Bible calls it the root and stock of Abraham. And by the help of God tonight, I want to preach to you the name of an old Sunday school song we used to sing. I want to preach to you on this Friday night, and I want to rejoice in the Holy Ghost. I want to talk about Father Abraham. Father Abraham. Abraham. Look at the person next to you and tell him, make sure Abraham's your daddy. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. There are a lot of people claiming to be Christian. There's a lot of people that will tell you that we're the chosen ones. We're the ones going to go to heaven. And they'll tell you that the way to go to heaven is thus and so. Some people will have you eating crackers and drinking wine for salvation. Believing it becomes the actual body and the actual blood of Jesus. Some folks will have you believing, confessing with your mouth. And they tell you you don't need to be baptized. Other folks say, well, no, you've got to believe and you've got to be baptized, but that's all you've got to do. Some folks think that you've got to say a certain amount of prayers and that will get you in heaven. Tonight, we don't believe any of that. We believe that you must be born of the water and you must be born of the Spirit to enter the kingdom of God. Amen. That you've got to repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and that you shall receive. It's a promise. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's how you are born again. But being born into the right family is a big deal because there was a lot of people competing for the name Abraham's son. Even to this day, they're still fighting over who the rightful son of Abraham is. They pick up rocket propelled grenade launchers and they shoot them. They pick up rocks and they throw them. They they make IUDs and they hide them underneath the ground to blow up Humvees. They they try to get their hands on nuclear weapons to blow up the world because they're trying to prove they're Abraham's boys. And the this is our land. And there's another group standing there saying, No, no, we're Abraham's children. This is our land. It belongs to us. And they fight for the geography of Israel. And what is true in the physical world is also true in the spirit world as we fight for the spiritual geography of the kingdom of God. I'm here tonight to contend for the truth. I'm glad that I'm Jesus name. I'm glad that I speak with tongues. Don't be shy about saying that. Paul said I speak in tongues more than you all. I'm glad I've been washed in the blood. I'm glad that I'm a tongue talker. I'm glad I believe in the oneness of God. And if it separates me, it separates me. That's okay. I'm Abraham's son. But there is a fight for the identification of belonging as the heir of Abraham. 
Ishmael fought and wrestled with Isaac and mocked him. And today, false doctrine tries to wrestle and mock us as we contend for Abraham's promises. And the Bible says that not just because they're Abraham's seed are they counted children of the promise, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. It matters which bloodline you come through. Amen. It matters who your dad is. I don't mean in a physical sense. I mean in a spiritual sense. Because if your father is Jesus Christ, you have it made. If your father, if you have the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, if you have the Father of heaven and earth, you have it. Amen. This is why they had genealogies in the Bible. The exhaustive genealogies to pinpoint where they came from, to pinpoint who they were involved with, what lineage they had. And tonight, it matters what you're born into. Let me put it to you this way. It matters that you're born again of the water and spirit. You don't want to just come any old way. You don't want to just believe generically in your mind. Because believe means a lot more than just mental confidence. You don't want to just pray a sinner's prayer. You don't want to just show up and shake a preacher's hand or sign a card or something like that. You don't want to do that. You want to be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost and to know that you're not a son or a daughter unless you've done that. Because Abraham had children, and i got to make up in my mind, I'm going to be a son or a daughter of Abraham. I, I want to try to say it this way. In the Bible... You'll see it played out through time. You'll see it in the genealogy. And you'll be able to note who you are and what you believe. Because Jesus Christ isn't just born into any family. He's born into Abraham's family. So I want to just take a moment and try to talk about it. Because, because these men were patriarchs. You're here tonight because of Abraham. And Abraham is not just a figure in the Bible. He's not just somebody you learn about in Sunday school. Abraham became what was called the father of the faithful. And tonight, Abraham represents something very dynamic. Abraham is representative of faith. Abraham, when you think Abraham, think faith. Because he walked by faith. The Bible says that against hope, he believed in hope. It says that Abraham staggered not at the promises of God, but was strong in faith. Considering not the deadness of Sarah's womb or even of his own body, but he was strong in faith. I'm going to tell you tonight that if you're going to be a child of Abraham, you've got to have faith. Hallelujah. I, before you leave this building, I hope somebody leaves with your faith sky high that God is able. I don't care what happened before you came to this camp. God is able. I don't care what's waiting on you when you get home. God is able. I don't care what the devil's telling you. God is able. I don't care what lie he threw at you. God is able. He is able. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Oh, hallelujah. If you're going to be a child of Abraham, you're going to have to have faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hallelujah. It's the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And if you walk through the Hebrews 11, it'll take you through the men and women who by faith did things. If you ever want to build your faith and confidence, you open up to Hebrews 11 and you read about the heroes of faith. It's about faith. Now, the thing about faith is we have faith tonight, but the denominal world claims faith too. 
They claim faith too. They, they'll tell you that you've got to believe in God. And they'll claim Abraham as their father, just like Ishmael claimed Abraham as his father. Did you know that God didn't look at Ishmael the same way he looked at Isaac? Amen. I, I was reading one time in the Scripture where, where, where God told Abraham to offer up his son on the altar at Moriah. And he told him and gave him instructions about offering up his son. And he told him, he said, take thy son, thine only son. Now, I know that God knows the end from the beginning. And God knows all things. And God knows that Abraham had a son, an older brother named Ishmael, tucked away right over here. And biologically, he is Abraham's son. But in God's world... If it's not of His will, it doesn't exist. In the scheme of eternity, oh, hallelujah, if it's not God's plan, it's going to pass away. God never said that, that Abraham and Hagar would conceive and bring forth a son of promise. He said that Abraham and Sarah would bring forth a son of promise. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you that you've got to do it God's way. I don't care if you've got generic faith. You've got to do it God's way. I, let me put it this way. It doesn't matter if you believed. That's not enough. I want to know, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Honey, you better come through the church. You better come through the right woman. You better come through the... You got to be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. Because Ishmael's birth doesn't register on heaven's roll. Ishmael's birth doesn't count. No other birth counts but the real, genuine. You must be, you must be, you must be born of the water and of the Spirit. How you're born matters. <laughs> faith you got to have faith I want somebody to leave full of faith tonight and I don't just mean lip service I mean action too somebody said well we're not justified by by works oh you need to read your Bible because faith without works did you know Martin Luther tried to rip that out of the Bible because it didn't fit with his pet doctrine of justification by faith alone and easy believism and greasy grace and all of that stuff? He, he, he didn't, it didn't fit with that. So he tried to rip the book of James out of the Bible because tucked away in James is a little piece of apostolic dynamite that says that faith wrought with his works. And by works was faith made perfect. Hallelujah. Abraham believed God. He offered up his son Isaac, and the Bible says he was justified by works. Well, I don't know if that excites you. That excites me because I know that I got the real deal. When I get baptized in Jesus' name, they want to tell me that's my works. Honey, I, that, I don't forgive my sins. God forgives my sins. He does all the work. I'm just obeying Him. When He fills me with the Holy Ghost, that's not me doing that. He does the work. He fills me with the Holy Ghost. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done. But it is by His mercy that He saved us. But you still got to be baptized. And you still... Because Ishmael's not going to get this. Isaac is. No other birth counts. That's how Isaac could be his only son. So faith, if you let faith do what... You don't want to join faith up to just anybody. You don't want to join faith up to Hagar. Because you'll produce, I know a lot of people that, that get involved with the flesh. Their faith gets involved with the flesh. And it, they think that's going to produce Isaac. If, if faith ever mixes with flesh, you don't get Isaacs, you get Ishmaels. What are you saying, Brother Ursha? Well, don't ever take it into your own hands and try to do this thing. Let God do this thing. Follow the Word of God. 
follow the word. I know a lot of young people that say, well, you know what? I've got to go out and find me somebody to date, somebody to date, because I don't see anybody to date. And, you know, I don't think God will mind. And you better be careful, because if you get your hands on this thing and you start getting in the flesh, you are not, you think it's going to produce an Isaac or a blessing. It's not. It's going to produce an Ishmael. And they'll never obey, and they'll never submit, and they'll never get involved with the kingdom of God because you didn't do it God's way. Don't take your faith and try to put it into a carnal mode of operation because it's not going to produce what you think it's going to produce. Well, well, I don't see it in the church. I don't see any way in the church. Abraham didn't see any way in Sarah either. But God said Sarah's going to have a son. God's going to... Sometimes faith looks a little barren, but you've got to stagger not at the promises. You've got to be strong in faith against hope. You believe in hope. That's how Abraham operates. So you hang on, Abraham, because faith will inevitably give birth to promise. Abraham gave birth to Isaac. And faith will give birth to promise. <laughs> Isaac was the seed of promise. Amen. When you do this thing right, when your faith operates like it's supposed to, it'll start to give birth. First thing it'll do is it'll have a baby named Promise. There's a baby named Isaac that came out. Do things God's way. Do things God's way. And this thing will start a natural chain reaction in your life. And you'll receive promise. I'm glad that we have a promise from God. When, 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 when you read some of the scriptures, and, and, and listen, sometimes I, I go in the Christian bookstore and I, I read those Bible promise books. You know those little daily breads where there's a little plastic bread and you pick out one scripture every day? You know what the problem with those things is? They're only the good promises. <laughs> it calls itself the Bible promise book. But it doesn't have any of the mean promises. <laughs> there's actually more tough promises than there are sweet promises. And it tricks people into thinking that God's this big, cushy teddy bear that doesn't mean what he says. And people try to quote God's promises before they even know what they're talking about. They'll quote things like, all the angels of the Lord encamp round about me. If you're living in sin, there ain't no angels encamping nowhere around you. <laughs> angels don't encamp around hypocrites. They don't encamp around liars and fornicators and thieves and double Minded? They, no, no, that's, they, they encamp round about them that fear Him. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, submit yourself to God or resist the devil and he'll flee. And people say, resist the devil and he'll flee. But the devil's not fleeing unless you submit yourself to God. You've got to have all of the promise. You've got to gather, gather this whole thing. There's a lot of promises in there. And they're good if you follow the promise. We got a promise tonight. If you will serve God and live for God, He'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. He'll take you out of this world. He'll put His favor. He'll put His blessing on you. You can't get that promise unless you follow His Word. But if you follow His Word, honey, the promise is unto you. And it is to your children. And it is to all that... So much for that you can't get the Holy Ghost today. Yeah, I can get the Holy Ghost today because it's unto me. It's to my children. It's to all that are afar off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Faith isn't supposed to remain stagnant. Faith is supposed to give birth to the promise of God's Word. Amen. The Bible says His promises are yea and they're amen. They're yea and they're amen. There's a promise that you'll receive. Abraham gives birth to Isaac. And I'm telling you that faith will give birth to promise. It will be tough. You might get intimidated. There was a lot of waiting. 
And there was a testing of faith. But I am telling you, God gave them a promise. And all the Hagars in the world can't stop the promises of God. Everybody that mocks, everybody that makes fun of, every natural doubt that you have cannot stop the promises of God. Fourteen years ago, I went to Fort Myers. And in that city, there was not a strong apostolic church. And I... I went there and I I said, Lord, I I want you to use me. And I felt like God told me in prayer that that he would strengthen me and he would be with me. So me and my wife and my son, we started a church with just the three of us. And there were times where it was very discouraging. It was times where it felt like it was tearing me apart. Great, great lows, great highs, and just all over the map. And, And there were times where God would show me things in dreams. Now, I'm not a big dream guy. Usually, I think that people who dream dreams had too many mushrooms on their pizza last night. If I had if I had a dollar for every dream that somebody told me that was just their fancy imagination, I would have my church built by now. And I'm not a big dream guy, but there were a couple of times God gave me a dream. And literally, we found our church building because at two o'clock in the morning, I sat upright And I saw my church building in my dream. I literally got up out of my bed at 2 in the morning and I started driving the streets of Fort Myers looking for the building in my dream. It took me two weeks and I found the building that I saw in my dreams. And it was so expensive and it was on such a busy stretch of highway, I thought there's no way in this earth this is ever going to happen. But I'm going to tell you that when God... If you'll have the faith, it'll give birth to a promise. That was eight years ago. We're having church in that building today. It's the second busiest street in the city of Fort Myers. And it's growing and we're busting out walls. We're getting ready to bust out another wall because God will honor your faith. I can't tell you the amount of times where I thought it was over that I held on to that vision and said, God, I have faith. I have faith. I don't know how, but you're going to do it. You give birth. You give birth. You said it was going to happen. Now, God, I need you to make it happen. I need you to provide the money. I need you to give me the strength. I need you to give me the vitality because I can't do it on my own. You gave me a promise and I'm acting on it now. Amen. If you'll stick around that long and you'll let promise do its thing in your life. If you'll let promise get to work inside of you and you'll you'll accept. You you wouldn't believe the amount of people that won't even accept the promises of the Bible. you, You can come to them and say the Bible says that you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. And you'll show them Acts 2, 8, 10, 19. 1 Corinthians 1, Galatians 3, 27, Romans chapter 6, verse 3. You can show them Colossians 2, 11 and 12. You can show them all these verses about baptism in Jesus' name to one degree or another. And they will look at you with a dull look in their eyes because they cannot believe the promise. Amen. But that book is full of promises. There was a majority of people that looked into the land of promise and said, we cannot do it. But there were two that were preached about this morning, Brother Morton preached about them, that said, our God is well able. I need some young people in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, tonight to say, we are able. I don't have to get pregnant before I'm married. We are able. I don't have to do drugs. I know the society says I have, but, but, but I don't have to because... God is able. I don't have to be a statistic because God gave me a promise. I don't have to backslide. I don't have to taste of the world. I don't have to lose out with God. God gave me a promise. God gave me a promise. And we are well able. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This is our promised land. This is our time. God gave me that. And I'm going to inhabit. I'm going to take it. I'm going to eat the fat of the land. I need somebody to believe it with all of your heart because it will come to pass if you will believe it. 
Amen. I don't want to spend too much time on promise because promise gives birth to. Promise will give birth to two twin boys named Jacob and Esau. After you've grabbed the promise and after you've dared to believe it, after you have dared to start to follow the Word of God and to claim His promise, you'll give birth to something. Something will happen to you. You'll give birth to two boys that go different ways. (laughs) Anybody here ever wrestle with your flesh and your spirit? (laughs) I'm preaching to young people tonight that when this, when this camp meeting is over, you're going to go back home and there's going to be flesh that whispers in your ear and says, you don't need that. You need to hang around your old friends. You need to, you need to look at this again. You need to go over here. You need to, that, 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 that's long gone. It's faded. And Esau will come out of your your lineage, and he'll try to grab control of you. You don't need to read that Bible. See, Esau has an appetite for the flesh. Esau is flesh. He's the older brother. He's the old man, and he's strong, and he's powerful, and he's a mighty hunter. Hallelujah. He's predatory, in other words. He's got a taste for the things of this world. And he will arise and he'll tell you, you don't need to go to church. You don't need to listen to that pastor. You don't need to read that Bible. We're not going to pray today. We're going to sleep in. We're not going to go there. We're going to do this. We want to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. You're going to give birth to two things. It's going to feel like a war on the inside of you. One's pulling that way and one's pulling that way. I'm talking about the children of Abraham. And you're going to give birth to something in your life as God tries to save you. Hallelujah. On the other side of that equation, there's another twin boy. His name's Jacob, and Jacob is of the Spirit. We've got a good thing going in the Spirit here tonight. Esau's not here tonight. We're just a bunch of Jacobs, and we're praising, and we're dancing, and we're shouting, and we're loving the things of God. Hallelujah. You want to make sure that you follow the Spirit. You don't follow the flesh, because Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. I don't want the old man. I want the new man. I don't want the old life. I want the new life. I don't want the predatory. I want the submissive. You don't have to go to Hollywood. That's what Esau wants. You need to go to church. That's what Jacob wants. You don't have to watch that trash. You need to open your Bible because Jacob has an appetite for the things of God. If you don't want the promise, I'll take the promise Hallelujah. Why is it so hard to serve God? Why do I want to do this so bad? Why am I pulled in two different directions? Because you've given birth to two twins. If you feed your flesh, your flesh will win. See, Esau always sells out for the temporary satisfaction. Esau will always sell out for what tastes good right then, and he'll regret it later. The smell, the aroma, the feeling, the texture, the encounter overwhelms Esau as the physical man and his senses want it so bad that they'll sell out eternity for a moment of pleasure. <laughs> But Jacob is different. He'll look at you and say, I want the promises of God no matter how good it looks. No matter how good it tastes. No matter how good it seems in the moment. I'm not looking down at right now. I'm lifting up my eyes. And I'm looking down the road. Esau, you're not just selling out camels, donkeys, and tents. You're selling out the promises of Abraham. 
You're selling out the stars in the heavens. You're selling out the sand by the seashore. You're selling out the heritage of God. You're selling out the Messiah. You're selling out hope. You're selling out everything. Amen. I need somebody to make up in your mind. I don't care what the devil, how he fixes it, how he prepares it. I'm not biting. I don't savor the things that be of man. I savor the things that be of God. I'm... And if Esau gets too strong, then I'll just fast until he shuts up. And my spiritual man can come out and can say, I'm going to serve the Lord. Esau looks at Friday night camp meeting and says, I don't want that. There was a lot of Esau's in the line at that gas station, Brother Patrick. But tonight there's some Jacob's that said, we want something more. We know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God shall man live. It's not about my appetite. It's about my spirit. It's not about... I don't want the sensuality. I don't want the appetite. I don't want that. I want the things of God. The tug of war between your flesh and your spirit is a very real thing. So I, one, one young man looked at me and he, he said, Pastor Urshan, he said, why didn't you tell me living for God was so hard? I said, what are you talking about? The Bible says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. If you tell me the work of God is hard, I know that you're in your flesh. And I know you're playing with sin because the way of the transgressor is hard. So what are you doing that you're not telling me about? Because when you do it with all of your heart, serving God is the easiest life. And did you know, did you know when you serve God with all your heart, when the blue and red and white lights show up in your rear view mirror, you don't have to break out in a sweat? Yeah. You don't have to worry about what you got in the wheel well of your car. You don't have to worry about who knows what you said, who you said it to. Is it the same story that you... No, no. Living for God is easy. You don't have to worry about who's going to come knocking on your door at 2 o'clock in the morning. You don't have to go... worry about if your pastor is going to find you. You don't have to worry about somebody finding out something that you hid. Uh-uh. Living for God is easy, honey. Living for God is easy when you do it right. It's that halfway living for God that's hard. (laughs) You can be seated. He said, my God, I got in church. I got the Holy Ghost. I got baptized. And all hell broke loose. My family's fighting me. I'm tempted by everything that walks by. I'm wrestling. I'm trying to hang on. I barely come crawling in on Sunday. A battle has erupted in my life. I looked at him. I said, no, a battle has not erupted in your life. The battle has erupted way back before man was ever born when there was war in heaven. That's when the battle erupted. You always had a battle. You just didn't know there was a battle. And now your eyes popped open and you are in the battle for eternity. For your soul, for your... The battle always did rage. You were just dead. Now that you're awake, you know the We've been fighting this battle a long time. And our grandparents fought it before us. And our great-grandparents. You're a newcomer to the game. When you wake up in your spirit, you realize that this thing is eternal. The next time you start thinking something looks so good and selling out for sin is worth it. Remember this. The devil's not just after you. He's after your kids. And when you sell out you, you sell out them. Did you know if Ruth had never done what she did with Boaz, there never would have been a David? I I don't believe that the devil was just after Ruth. I believe he was after David too. Oh, hallelujah. That's right. When you enter into a spiritual war, there's nothing in the flesh... That can compare to the promises of God. There is a temporary pleasure. There, there is a, an hour and a power of darkness. That's what Jesus said. This is your hour. This is the power of darkness. There's a temporary triumph. But oh, it's nothing compared to the promises of God. 
It is nothing compared to the promises of God. Hallelujah. They don't just stop with you. They hit handed down to your kids. The Bible says to your children and to all that are afar off. It goes to your kids' kids. There are people here tonight because your great-great-grandparents got the Holy Ghost and got baptized in Jesus' name. And they overcame devils because somebody said Esau's not going to win today. Jacob's going to win. Esau, the flesh isn't going to win today. The Spirit's going to win. I'm not going to the club. I'm going to the church. I'm not drinking from the bottle. I'm drinking from Jacob's well. I'm not going to... Come on, somebody's got to get in the Spirit and realize the taste isn't worth it. Some people never get past that part right there. They fall into their flesh. And you never hear from them again. Their lineage stops. You don't read about Esau's kids. Did you know that the little catchphrase, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that we quote about the patriarchs was supposed to be Abraham, Isaac, and Esau? But nobody says that and it sounds foreign to our tongue because Jacob inherited. The spirit. I have to focus on the spirit. If I'll focus on the spirit... God will do the rest. I made up in my mind when I, when, I, when I was attracted to someone, wanted to marry somebody, I wanted a spiritual woman. There were girls that they could, man, they could doll themselves up, they could cut their eyes, they could swish, they could walk, they could do all kinds of stuff. They, 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 they knew the game, but I didn't want that because if they were going to do that with me, they were going to do that with some other guy too. I didn't want that. I wanted somebody that knew how to pray. I wanted somebody that was going to stay. I wanted somebody that loved God. And I'm not just looking at the body. I'm looking at the spirit. I'm looking at the whole package. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Because the spirit matters. I don't care how broad his shoulders are. That don't make him the next king of Israel. You better make sure he's a praiser. He's a worshiper. He's a psalmist. He's a dancer. You better make sure that he's good material. Because God's going to look at the spirit. It's going to be the spirit that matters. It's going to be the spirit that dictates. God will let the spirit inherit. Flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't want to make a fair show in the flesh. Whew. You ever you ever notice that in the world the bad guys always get attention? For some reason kids think that's cool. The guys who can do the craziest thing, the girls that can be the the baddest, they get this they get this uh, the world looks at that as though it's exciting or something. You know what we call those when they graduate from high school? Morons. Or felons, I, either one. Because the flesh doesn't work. The, the fair show in the flesh doesn't work. I would rather find the person in the prayer room. I would rather find the person that knows how to dance before God. Now, now the flesh will mock that. The flesh will make fun of that. The flesh will belittle that. But Esau always does that. So does Ishmael. The older brother always does that. But the younger brother is the one that's going to get the inheritance. The one that's going to follow after that which is spiritual. The one that's going to stay close to the tent, the church. The one that's going to stay close. My God, somebody listen to me. I want to find the one that 20 years from now, they're still going to carry a Bible. They're still going to love God. They're still going to be what they always were. That's how it works in the spirit world. I want the spirit. Make up in your mind, I'm going to be a spiritual man. Make up in your mind, I'm going to be a spiritual woman. The Spirit always trumps the flesh. Amen. Now, if we get all that straight, Abraham to Isaac, Isaac to Jacob, faith to promise, promise to Spirit, And Spirit will give birth to a little boy named Judah. He's the next one on the list. These are the big names. I know there's a lot of little names in there, and I'm not going to focus on them because I have no idea what they mean. But I know what Judah means. 
Judah, some of you know this, means praise. When it came time to go and fight against the enemies, they didn't call for any other tribe. They called for Judah. They said, Lord, who's going to lead us in the battle? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. There is power in praise. If, 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 you're going to, if you're going to do anything as an apostolic, you're going to have to learn how to praise the Lord. And I don't apologize for my praise. I am Pentecostal. I am apostolic. I'm not denominational. I'm not. I don't think we should be quiet. I don't think we should be reserved. I don't think we should be inhibited. I don't think we should be introverted. I think that God inhabits the praises of Israel. And if he's going to do that, then I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thine diseases, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord, O my soul. So, so Judah, praise, is an offensive part of our experience. And if, and if I'll get in the spirit, I'm going to give birth to praise. If you stick around us long enough, you're going to start praising God. That's right. I'm talking to the guy that sits there with his arms folded and trying to be Mr. Cool. You don't want to be Mr. Cool in the presence of God. You want to be Mr. Praise in the presence of God. Judah's the one that brings down the enemy. Judah is the one who leads the offensive. Judah is the one who's, who is the head of the vanguard. He's the tip of the spear. He's the one that's going to be the first out there ready to go. I want to know, are there any young men, any young ladies that know how to praise him? Have you made up in your mind, I'm going to praise Him? I'm a, this is part of the lineage. This is part of our experience. We are going to praise the Lord. Amen. So we clap our hands and we stomp our feet. Amen. And we lift our hands and we worship God and we praise and we praise and we magnify. I like to magnify the Lord. Yes, I believe people spend too much time magnifying the devil. Do not ever fall into the trap of magnifying the devil. What I mean by that is don't you sit there and think about how bad it is. Don't think about what's going wrong. Don't talk about what's going wrong. Don't praise the devil. Praise God. There are some people that get the wrong end of the telescope. And they look through it. And they look at God's promises as these little teeny tiny things. And when they come to the devil, they turn it around and they look and he's so huge and he's so big. I don't want to look at the size of Goliath. I want to look at the size of God. If you're so focused on Goliath that you can't see God, then you're not going to know how to praise. But if you will magnify the Lord... That means making bigger, making bigger, making. Now, you're not actually making bigger because he's omnipresent. He feels all things. But you can make him bigger to you. And in your life, he grows and he grows and he grows and he grows and he gets bigger and he gets bigger. And Goliath gets smaller and smaller. And you'll find something out that you can praise your way out of your problem. That's right. Stop talking about how bad the devil is and start talking about how good God is. Stop counting your curses and start counting your blessing. God is good. God is great. God is able. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the noontime. Praise Him. Praise Him. I need a Judah to make up in your mind that I'll praise Him. You might not praise Him, but I'll praise Him. You might not clap, but I'll clap. You might not shout, but I'll shout. Because he's worthy of praise. If you're going to be Pentecostal, you're going to have to praise. That's what we do. These are the children of Abraham. This is what Abraham produces. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Yes, sir. Amen. That's why we know that quiet church is not part of Abraham's family. Because there's nothing in that book that talks about quiet church. That book says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. And praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Why don't you try to do that sometime? Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Why don't you try to do that sometime? His greatness fills all things. Let your praise match His excellent greatness. Don't bring half-hearted praise. Don't bring quiet praise. Don't bring halfway praise. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Honey, you'll tear the walls down. You'll... False doctrine doesn't praise like this because they're not Abraham's kids. Only Abraham's kids can produce Judah. Hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost. See, that's what happens when you start praising God. The old timer said you start turning the prayer wheel. I watch it in my church. People come in and they'll start praising. They're uncomfortable at first. We're running the aisles. We're climbing the walls. We're, we're speaking in tongues. And they're looking around uncomfortably thinking, what in the world kind of church did I just walk into? They stick around a little while, and they start to praise. Their foot starts to tap. Their hands start. Their fingers start to tap. They'll start to kind of They'll start to join in, and they'll start talking about the goodness of God. <laughs> I read one day. I read one day that 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 in the book of Genesis, when when when. When Israel was giving out the blessings and the cursings, the Bible says he looked at Judah and he said, Judah is a lion's whelp. A lion's whelp is a lion's cub. It's a baby lion. Judah is a baby lion. Let me tell you something. When you give birth to praise, it's the infancy of something. The thing about praise is it starts out like a baby, but it gets bigger. You keep on feeding that thing. You keep on feeding that thing. You keep on feeding that thing. Promises, faith, preaching, blessing, and the whelp don't stay a whelp. It becomes a lion. Hallelujah. Praise doesn't stay praise. You let praise keep on growing and it'll turn into worship. Judah doesn't stay Judah. He eventually gives birth to David. Yeah, that's right. That's the guy in front of the Ark of the Covenant. That's the guy playing on the psaltery and harp. That's the guy writing the Psalms. That's when praise goes nuclear. That's when praise turns into something else. That's when praise grows up. That's when praise... Ah. You can praise people. You can praise circumstances. You can tell somebody, man, you sang so good tonight. You just praised them. You can praise. You can praise somebody because they got a nice dress or they got a nice, nice tie or they 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 have they look their hair so nice. You can praise them for a job well done. Praise can be done for a lot of things, and you can praise God. You can talk about how good God is. God is good. God is great. God. That's that's why. And you're talking about it and you're praising Him. But but there's a point in your praise where it sinks down a little bit into your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ever notice it in the 23rd Psalm? He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And he began to talk about the Lord. He maketh me. He talks about him as a he. He talks about him in the third person. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That's good praise. He leadeth me beside still waters. He 
restoreth my soul. I'm talking about God, and I'm praising Him. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. But then you know what happens? You go through the valley of the shadow of death. And when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, you ain't saying He. Now you're saying, I will fear no evil for Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence. You stop talking about God and you start talking to God. This thing sinks down. This thing grows up. This thing goes a little deeper as David comes dancing and shouting and gaining dominion and gaining power and driving out Philistines and driving out Midianites and driving out Ammonites as Abraham's boys. Anybody know how to worship Him tonight? Anybody know how to worship Him tonight? Anybody been there? Anybody know how to grab a tambourine? Anybody know how to slay a giant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. David's when you start running. David's when you start leaping. David's when you start shouting. David's when you start dancing before the Lord with all your might. Worship. 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 It's when the words go deeper than your mouth. They get down in your heart. They get down in your bones. They get in your hands. They get in your feet. They get in your spirit. They get in your heart. They get down on the inside. I'm talking about Abraham's kids. I'm talking about Abraham's boys. This is what produces the patriarchs in your life. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. That choir started singing, He's holy, He's mighty, He's worthy. I don't know what all the words were, but I felt little doodads go down my backbone. I felt like dancing before the Lord as my inner David started praising God. Started worshiping God. I'm not talking about Him anymore. I'm talking to Him. Hallelujah. He's my strength. He's my shield. He's my strong tower. Hallelujah. The Lord is my light. And He's my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, came against me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. Oh, I feel something stirring right now in the Holy Ghost. Because, honey, this thing don't stop at David. Because eventually, if you praise him loud enough, and you play, praise him long enough, and you worship him, you're going to forget about who's over here, and you're going to forget about who's over here, and you're going to forget about who's over there, and something's going to happen as worship starts to give birth to Jesus. Can I talk to you about salvation? Can I talk to you about receiving the Holy Ghost? 
eventually your hallelujah changes as God grabs your tongue and you begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Hallelujah. God will baptize you with the Holy Ghost as you worship Him, as you praise Him. Something takes place in the supernatural and you begin to cry out to Him with all your heart. Hallelujah. That's right. The Bible says that Jesus came riding in on a donkey. And when he comes riding in, they picked up palm branches. And they said, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. They said, tell them to be quiet. The religious world will tell you to be quiet. The denominal world will tell you to be quiet. Sophistication will tell you to be quiet. And they looked at Jesus and said, tell them to be quiet. And Jesus said, I tell you, have you never read? Have you never read that out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? I tell you, if these hold their peace, surely the rocks are going to cry out. Somebody make up in your mind. I'm going to cry out to Him. Jesus is riding into my house. Jesus is coming into my city. Jesus is coming into my heart. He comes. He's coming. Salvation is coming. Salvation is coming. This is the lineage. This is the bloodline. Salvation's riding into your house today. Oh, somebody lift your hands right now all over this building. Somebody cry out to God. Cry out to God. Cry out to God. I'm talking about faith. I'm talking about promise. I'm talking about spirit. I'm talking about praise. I'm talking about worship. And then I'm talking about the infilling of the Holy Ghost. This is Abraham's bloodline. This is Abraham's kids. This is how Abraham's family does it. That's it. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Oh, you can feel the Holy Ghost right now. On this Friday night, I want you to close out this thing with a bang. Amen. I want you to close this thing out worshiping and praising God. All over this building, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are apostolic. That's who we are. I don't care if Michael looks down from her ivory tower. I'm going to dance anyway. I'm going to shout anyway. I'm going to praise anyway. I'm going to dance anyway. I'm going to sing anyway. I'm going to pray anyway. This is how Abraham's family does it. Now lift up your voice all over this building in the name of Jesus. Let go. Let go in Jesus' name. Shout unto God. Shout unto God. That's it. Shout unto God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let your faith go. Come on. Let your praise go. Come on. Let your worship go. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Somebody's going to get the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody's going to get the Holy Ghost right now. Yes. Yes. Worship is giving birth. 
Come on, baby. Come on, baby.
Baptism is done to wash away our sins. Acts 22.16 Baptism is done to be reborn to new life. John 3.5 Romans 6.3-6 Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ. Galatians 3.26-27 and 27. Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings unto the remission of sins, for salvation, to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first, resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.